Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. This is what many people know about Madagascar is uh, these movies, and the movies have been good for us because they actually put Madagascar into people's consciousness. We're very excited to have Dr. David Krauss from Stony Brook here tonight. He's done extensive re research uh, with fossilized ancient creatures and also has dedicated much of his time to a wonderful charity organization um, to help children uh, in need in Madagascar. This is the kind of stuff that we dream of. Um, of, of really, you don't expect to find what you hope to find, but in this case we did. I grew up on a ranch where there were dinosaur fossils and uh, we were able to find some fossils when I was about 10 or 12 and I got very excited about that and, and uh, never grew up, so I'm still doing paleontology as an adult. Only a few thousand years ago, there were even more unique animals that didn't really shed light on where those original animals came from. So the focus of the work is to study the evolution of um, all kinds of backboned animals that lived in Madagascar during the late Cretaceous period, which is the, uh, the age of dinosaurs. The really cool thing about Madagascar is that nobody had really worked there intensively, and so almost everything we find in Madagascar is a species that's new to science, and we still keep making discoveries every year. And in 1993, the first year that we were there, I was very fortunate to uh, find these. So these are individual vertebrae, and you can see from this rock hammer, this is a regulation size hammer, um, these are pretty big. What pushed me there was, was the whole interesting question of how the animals got to Madagascar that live there today. And I thought by looking at the age of dinosaurs, I might be able to find some fossils of the kinds of very unique animals that live in Madagascar today, things like lemurs and uh, weird chameleons and so on and so forth. These things are called tenrex, about 500 species of frogs, uh, not all of which are described. Um, very weird carnivorans, this is called a fusa. As it turns out, we didn't find uh, those, but we found many other kinds of animals that are unique to Madagascar, but also are very poorly represented in the entire southern hemisphere. So the fossils uh, we've been very fortunate to find are extraordinary in terms of their preservation completeness and also uniqueness. I have technicians there who worked on it for about six months. They put it all together, and this is what we have. This is where you say, ooh and ah. Thank you. We think that the animals that live there today, that their ancestors got to Madagascar by rafting uh, on huge rafts of vegetation that got washed out to sea, uh, probably from Africa, primarily from Africa. And uh, we think that partly because we don't find the ancestors in the Lake Cretaceous. So they must have gotten to Madagascar after the Lake Cretaceous, when Madagascar was already an island. This is Inauguration Day back in 2001. These are the two teachers, and this is a sign that says Sokoli Riembato, meaning the Stony Brook School. The organization that I started to help the children in Madagascar is called the Madagascar Ankizi Fund. Ankizi means children in the Malagasy language, and the children that live in these remote areas don't have any education, nor do their parents, as a matter of fact. Uh, we were looking for ways to repay the many, the many villagers that had helped us in the area uh, for their kindness and, and uh, they wanted an education for their children and obviously wanted health care for their children so we're doing that by building schools and bringing health care teams from Stony Brook University. The funds raised for helping the children is primarily through children and uh, those children do small fundraisers and they learn that they can make a very meaningful difference by raising only a small amount of money. For instance, uh, if they raise $500, we can hire a teacher for a, very, for a, for a full year of, of teaching in one of our five schools. Once that thing is all put together, this is what it looks like. And should you care to see this, it is actually on display in the um, administration building at Stony Brook University. There are scientific questions to be addressed. It's not just about finding um, some really cool fossils. It's about how you put them into the context of scientific questions. And then um, also the fact that as scientists I think we owe something. There's a, there's a social conscience involved in working in these countries and developing countries and finding ways to give back as well. If, if those two messages are perceived then it's been a successful talk.